Today I want to start a series on some of the terminology the French philosopher Gilles Deleuze uses to talk about the cinema. Deleuze wrote two books on cinema, the first being Cinema 1, The Movement Image, and the second being Cinema 2, The Time Image. And these are important and interesting books because Deleuze uses films as part of his larger question, which is simply, what is the world? And part of the answer to that question is that the world is an assemblage of all kinds of different elements. And these elements sometimes come together and are what he would call territorialized. So an example would be the way water and air pressure and I guess wind comes together to form a cloud. And then sometimes these things are deterritorialized or separated, like when a cloud rains and dissipates. Of course, when the water from the cloud goes down to the earth, it then assembles with other things or territorializes with other things. So it might territorialize with some dirt in order to make mud and so on and so on, later dissipating into dust and... Again, the process of territorialization and deterritorialization goes on and on and on. So in the cinema books, what Deleuze is doing is trying to show how this external technology of the cinema and all its conventions not only is an assemblage of different elements, but it's something that assembles with the human mind. And so in order to do this, Deleuze comes up with all kinds of terminology. And one of the terms that he comes up with is what he calls the perception image. And I'm going to unpack what this perception image is and then give an example of how it works. So as I was saying, one of Deleuze's chief concerns is how different elements and things in the world assemble or disassemble. And so for Deleuze, the perception image is a combination of two things that come together in our minds. When we watch a film, we're interacting with what we see and what we hear. We're assembling the sights and sounds and in a larger sense, we're assembling with the theater itself and with the entire business enterprise that needs to plug us into those seats in order for the machine to function. Now, in terms of the actual film and how we bring it into our mind in order to assemble it, assemble with it, one part of what this perception image is, is the character's subjective point of view. So the subjective point of view of a character in the film, the actual world that a character is looking at and how they're looking at it and the things that they see as they see it in that world. That's part of the perception image. And another part of the perception image are the things in the narrative world of the movie that are external to the character and those can be things that the character is completely unaware of. So there's what the character sees and what we see the character seeing and then there's the external world that the character may or may not see, but that we certainly do see. And here's where this term gets sticky. Part of the difficulty with this idea is that point of view shots are technically also external to the character. We as the viewer don't literally go inside the character and see through his or her eyes. We get an external representation of what the character is seeing, and that comes in combination with other shots that gives us the illusion that we're seeing things from their perspective but it's an illusion we wouldn't have if we were only given point of view shots. So the perception image is actually not a single image, it's a sequence. It's a sequence that puts together point of view shots and external shots, creating scenes that give both a vision of the character's viewpoint and the world that the character lives in. And the point is that the film presents things in this way, but that we have to assemble with the film as it plays out on the screen. Our minds take that material and assemble the information into a coherent mental picture of what the character thinks and feels. And we combine what's going on outside of the character's experience and what's going on within the character's experience. And Deleuze calls all of this together the consciousness of the camera. In other words, the supposedly objective camera that is viewing things and events from the outside world of the character begins to assume a subjective presence it acquires, and these are Deleuze's worlds, it acquires an internal vision, an internal vision that in combination with our brains actually manages to simulate the way a character sees things. And what this means is that the perception image essentially collapses the distinction between objective and subjective and creates a perception of perception, which is a very interesting idea that Perception is something that can be perceived, and that is a huge part of Deleuze's project overall. He talks in The Logic of Sense about how the microscope, microscope itself has just 
changed everything. This, this, the human psychology changed so much when we began to realize that we can see inside of cells. So the, the perception of perception is a huge thing about what is the world. And to repeat, when we are perceiving what a character perceives by combining subjective and objective shots in our mind, we're doing it in real time or screen time as the story flows by. Now, an example that Deleuze gives is taken from a Lubitsch film, and it's a scene in which we see a bunch of men standing around, one of whom is missing a leg. Sorry, I couldn't find this scene to show you. Um, it's part of a sequence in which the camera is essentially placed on the ground, and it's kind of a weird shot. Taken out of context, you might think that it's exploiting the terrible experience of someone missing their leg, but as we get different shots in the sequence, we come to realize that the earlier shot represents the point of view of that legless man. And so this is all something that we put together in our minds as we watch. So again, the perception image is the term Deleuze uses to describe any sequence that uses objective and subjective shots in combination in order to have us as the audience perceive the perception of a character. And this need not be a vicarious experience for us. We're not getting the feeling of what it's like not to have a leg, although filmmakers could instill that feeling in us if they wanted. It's an objective process of concretely realizing or realizing that we are realizing a character's subjective experience. <laughs>